Hi everyone, welcome to Universal Gravitation, AP Physics C. Pretty cool chapter, excited to talk about. Uh, let's go into this. So this is the main uh, formula that we're going to be looking at. This formula, what this formula is telling us is all objects of mass are attracted to each other. So let me, let me explain this Universal Gravitation formula here. So we see that the force of gravity is equal to this g, this gravitational constant, which is uh, equal to 6.67 times 10 to negative 11, times the mass of one object, which in this case is the sun, times the mass of another object, divided by how far they are from each other squared. So key things to know about this is that any two object that has mass has a gravitational attraction between those two objects, uh, whether they're small or big. Of course, the bigger they are, the more force of gravity there's going to be between them. And the closer they are, the more force of gravity there's going to be between them. But let's do problems like this to kind of demonstrate more of this concept. So let's look at this first example. Example number one. In one hand, you hold an apple, 0.12 kilogram uh, apple. In the other hand, you hold a 0.2 kilogram orange. The apple and orange are separated by 0.75 meters. Uh, what is the force that the orange experiences? So this diagram is shown well because the force, the how far they're separating each other, we're always going to measure that from the center of masses of both objects or the center of mass of both objects. So let's look at this. What we're going to do is we know force of gravity is equal to G. Um, in this case, I'm going to say mass of apple times mass of orange divided by how far they are squared. So let's try to find what this force of gravity of this orange is going to be. Force of gravity is going to be equal to the gravitational constant, which we said was 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. The mass of the apple, which is in this case 0.12. The mass of the orange, which is 0.2. Divided by how far they are from each other squared, 0.75 squared. And let's see what we get when we put this into the calculator. So here's 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11. And be careful, because when you guys are doing this, so many of my students uh, get this wrong and by putting it into the calculator because there are so many big numbers and there's a lot to put in. So if you're trying to do it all at once, just be careful with putting it into your calculator correctly. And maybe I'll put, all, if you're trying to do it all in one shot in your calculator, make sure you use this many parentheses. But you get an answer of 2.85 times 10 to the negative 12 newtons, or the answer of 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, okay, 8, 5 newtons, okay? So this is the answer here, and this is why we don't see apples and oranges getting attracted to or moving towards each other, or a calculator or a pen, because everyday objects have so little mass that the force of gravity between each other is going to be so small that we almost don't even notice it, okay? So this is the force of attraction between each other. And what we should know is the force of attraction between each other is going to be exactly the same. The apple is attracted to the orange just as much as the orange is attracted to the apple. So it's the same exact amount. So question B says, if the objects were in space, which object would have a greater acceleration? So the thing is, even though they have the same exact amount of force, since uh, the apple is has less mass, it's going to have a greater acceleration. If they have the same force, but the apple has less mass, that means the apple will have a greater acceleration. So the apple will have greater acceleration. Okay. Okay, let's look at the next example. Scotty has climbed to the top of Mount Everest. Everest is 8,848 meters above sea level, and the Earth has a radius of 6.4 times 10 to the 6 meters. With this information, what is the acceleration of gravity that Scotty experiences? Mass of the Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24. So Scotty is up here. I'm going to draw him like this. And we want to find what is the acceleration of gravity that Scotty experiences. So again, we're going to be looking at this main formula. Force of gravity is equal to G. I'm going to say mass of Scotty times mass of Earth divided by how far they are from each other squared. Uh, so let's plug this in, or as much as we know. We have 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 
times mass of Scotty, which isn't given to us. Mass of the Earth, that is given to us, 5.97 times 10 to the 24, divided by how far they are from each other squared. So we have to be careful here because the radius of the Earth is 6.4 times 10 to the 6, and, but he's also 8,848 meters above the Earth's surface of the Earth. So we have to combine these two to find what, to see what the total is, which is R. So how we should write this is 6.4 times 10 to the 6 plus 8,848 and have that all be squared, okay? If you're trying to put in your calculator, oh, whoops, actually before we put in that calculator, we don't know what the mass of Scotty is. So, but something we should know is that the force of gravity is equal to the mass times the acceleration of gravity. So like we learned before, mass times 10, or in this case, mass times acceleration of gravity. So we should know that the force of gravity of Scotty is going to be equal to the mass of Scotty times the acceleration of gravity that Scotty experiences. And what we could do now is we could cross out mass of Scotty. And this is something you're going to see often, so get used to it. And now let's try to see if we can find acceleration and gravity. Again, be careful when you point to your calculators. Uh, make sure to either take your time or use lots of parentheses to get the correct answer. And then what we see is we have an acceleration of gravity of 9.69 meters per second squared. So we notice that when we're on top of Everest, we have sl there's slightly less gravity than if we were just on the surface of Earth, which is 9.8. And that's because we're further away from the surface. So if we get further out, there won't be as much gravity. And if you're on an airplane or on the International Space Station, it'd be even less. Okay, uh, moving on. All right, let's look at this. The gravitational acceleration on a planet's surface is 16 meters per second squared. What is the gravitational acceleration at an altitude of one planet diameter above the surface of the planet? So there's going to be a lot of questions like this where you're not given much information and you have to use proportions to figure out your answer. So again, we should know force of gravity is equal to G, uh, let's say mass of person, mass of Planet, PL, okay, divided by how far they are from each other squared. And then let's change this force of gravity to be the mass of the person times the acceleration of gravity. So we know when this person's on this planet, uh, the mass of the person cancels out, but we know when this person's on this planet, they experience an acceleration of gravity of 16 meters per second squared. So that's when they're on this planet. However, now they're going to be a full diameter away. So instead of just being one radius away, now they're three times further from where they originally were. So this R is going to increase by a factor of three. And there's going to be a lot of problems like this. So if this R increases by a factor of three because they're three times further, that means this side of the equation is going to change by one ninth. And if this side of the equation changes by one ninth, that means this side of the equation also has to change by one ninth, meaning that the acceleration of gravity should be 16 divided by nine, which gives us around 1.78 meters per second squared. Okay? And that should make sense because if you're further out, you're gonna experience less gravity than if you're on the surface. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Watch it again if it didn't because you see a lot of problems like this one here. Okay, and we're going to see more as we, as we continue with this. Okay, last problem here. An astronaut experiences a net force of zero and is positioned 140,000 meters from the center of asteroid 1 and 581,000 meters from the center of asteroid 2 along the straight line adjoining the centers of the asteroid. What is the ratio of mass x over mass m of the asteroids? So we want to find what mx over my is equal to. Uh, so the net force here is equal to zero. So what we should know is, oh, let's call this mass of asteroid two and then mass of asteroid one. 
What we should know is the force of gravity that this person experiences from asteroid 1 is going to be the same but the opposite of the force of gravity experienced by asteroid number 2. Uh, and we should know that because it says there's a net force of 0. So what we can kind of do is we can set these two equations equal to each other. We should know that force of gravity of 1 is equal to force of gravity of 2. Ooh, 2. So let's write this out. We have uh, G, uh, let's call this the mass of the person, times mass of asteroid 1, divided by 140,000 squared, is equal to capital G, mass of person, mass of asteroid 2, divided by how far they are, 581,000 squared. And let's see, we have G cancel on both sides, mass of person cancel on both sides. Oops, uh, X and Y, that should be, uh, <laughs> this should be 1 and 2. Maybe I'll change that, so masses of 1 and 2. Do, do, do. Okay. So now, if we rearrange this equation, we can say mass of asteroid 1 divided by mass of asteroid 2 is going to be equal, uh, I bring this mass of asteroid 2 down here, and I'm going to bring this 140,000 squared up here. So this is going to be 140,000 squared divided by 581,000 squared. And let's see what this equals. 140,000 squared divided by 581,000 squared. And we should get around 0. Uh, 0, 0.058, which is going to give us A. Okay? And that's pretty much it. That's our introduction. Next time, we're going to be talking about orbits and how things are orbiting around in space. Thanks for watching, everyone.